Um, hi, everyone. Uh, thanks for joining us. We're going to start up in about four minutes. All right. Priyanka, I love your hair. <laughs> So, hi, thank you. So, I started wearing this during social distancing because I don't have time to. You know, <laughs> to <laughs> but I have to confess, this is the first time I have um, gotten out of my PJ. So, thank you, guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that's the reason for my hat. <laughs> yep. Yep. <laughs> I did put some dry shampoo in my hair. That was like the extent of it. It looks great. <laughs> yeah. What's, what's oh your excuse, Ruben? <laughs> what's that? You, are you asking about my hat? Yeah. What's uh, that hat? Uh, bad hair day? <laughs> uh, every, every day is a hat day for me. I love, I love wearing a hat. Yeah, me too. I love, I love hats. It makes yeah. me feel smarter. <laughs> the thinking hat. Yeah. It's an artist thing, I think, everyone. Or almost all you know, you, know where. you know, for men, we don't have as many ways to accessorize as, as women do, you know. So I, I feel like this is the, the one thing I can do. I mean, I could be like Ron Haviv and wear a scarf all the time, but, you know. All right. That, that's we, are, we are starting the Facebook live feed. We're going to be starting up. Thanks for Thanks for joining us, everyone. We'll be starting in in about two minutes. Okay. All right. <laughs> I'm reading the the chat. Oh, is the chat already going? I get back to the hat discussion, please. <laughs> <laughs> the hat discussion. <laughs> I know. So today I was just like debating whether I should wear this. <laughs> can we can oh, we yes. <laughs> can we see them both on? <laughs> or this. Ooh, that's good because you're supporting New York. You should yeah. do that one. Yeah, but then can you see my eyes? <laughs> Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. All right. Then I'll keep it on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was worried that you know people might not see my uh, beautiful eyes. <laughs> Let me. See. Does anybody see, anybody actually see the Facebook feed? Are we uh, are we broadcasting live? Did it I happen? I don't see it. I was going to share it on my group, but I don't see it. I think it takes a couple minutes for it to load up, or that's been my. Are you seeing my screen right now? Are you seeing my Facebook feed? I um, see the screen. And the white see. placeholder, focus on the story. Oops. All right. Well, I'm hoping that it's that it's it's broadcasting on Facebook, but we'll Well, it says live on Facebook. Um I think it's it, I think it takes a couple minutes for it to actually go. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna start up here in about a minute, folks. Thanks for joining us tonight. Have a seat, or and <laughs> we're not. <laughs> Joe, well, it's Jay. Joe. You're on Facebook. It's live. Okay, excellent. Thank yeah. you, thank you, Shelley. Yeah. That that voice you hear is Shelley Hahn. She's not going to be a panelist, but she's helping with with some of the behind the scenes work here. Thank you, Shelley. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're going to start this up in right now. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, thanks for joining us. We're, we're really excited to have you here for this discussion about creativity in the worst of times. Uh, my name is Joe Newman. I'm the executive director and founder of Focus on the Story. We're a nonprofit organization based here in Washington, D.C., and our mission is to support visual storytelling that has a social impact. We were planning, we were in the middle of planning our third annual uh, fo uh, photo festival here in DC for the end of May. But obviously that's not gonna happen. Um, but we are very excited about switching gears 
and putting our efforts into bringing you some weekly online content through the month of June. And we're kicking it off tonight with what I think is going to be an, an awesome panel. Um, tonight, I encourage you to ask questions. Um, submit them. You can submit them while we're talking up here by using the Q&A function at, down there at the bottom of your screen. You can also obviously talk to us in chat, but if you do that, there's a good chance we're going to miss it with all the traffic in there. So please try to use the Q&A function. If I'm able to find your name in the list of attendees, and, and there's no guarantee that I will, I will unmute your mic and give you a chance to ask the question yourself. So it, it's, it's no coincidence that three of our four panelists tonight are from New York City. You know, they are in the area in the US that's, that's getting hit the hardest. Um, and frankly, what they're experiencing and what they're gonna tell us tonight is unfortunately, something that many more of us may have to go through in the coming weeks. I want to thank them all for, for joining us tonight and, and sharing their experiences. Uh, first, let me introduce the, uh, tonight's moderator. Tonight's moderator is a talented photographer who has um, uh, served at the highest levels of government in both the Clinton and Obama administrations. She's a very good friend of mine and a member of our board of directors, Chantel Wong. Chantel, it's your floor. Okay, great. Thank you, Joe, and uh, really welcome everyone. Uh, it's going to be a very interesting and certainly um, very um, emotional uh, session, I believe, uh, for all of us because uh, we're all going through this uh, um, this this difficult time together. So, my job is uh, going to be basically uh, staying uh, in the background more, uh, but I want to introduce our panelists uh, very quickly, very shortly, and then have them uh, do maybe more of their what they're doing. Uh, first of all is uh, Ruben Redding. Uh, he's a photographer and writer and musician uh, based in New York. Uh, he's been uh, really done a lot of award-winning uh, 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 street photography as well as uh, personal documentary photography. I'll let him talk a little bit about what he's uh, up to uh, when, he, when we get to him. Uh, secondly is Priyanka Rao. Priyanka is a, is a top uh, wedding uh, photographer in the fearless sense, uh, every word, way uh, of that word. Um, and certainly uh, uh, very much uh, uh, um, a wedding, uh, a photography mentor and educator, uh, very passionate about all the kind of work that you're doing. So I'll let you uh, sort of discuss. In the fearless sense, uh, every word. There's some echo going on. I, okay. I think maybe someone has their Facebook feed on. Ah. Um, anyway, I'll let uh, Priyanka talk a little bit about what she's been up to. It's very, very interesting. Uh, a community that she's built uh, since the since the lockdown, um, and and then we have uh, um, um, Gunara Samoylova, uh, also in uh, New York City. Uh, Gunara is a uh, street and fine art uh, photographer and founder of uh, Women Street Photographers. Uh, certainly, uh, a well known in our community, and uh, we're looking forward to it hearing a little bit about the kind of work that she's been doing in the last few uh, weeks uh, since the lockdown. Uh, and then finally is Angela uh, Douglas Ramsey, who uh, is not in New York, but in Norfolk, uh, Virginia, uh, out there in uh, the, the uh, uh, land where I guess the, the Navy, the US, uh, USS, uh, the Comfort uh, has been launched to go to New York to support uh, hospital beds and whatnot. So with that, I'm gonna uh, turn it over to Ruben. Uh, why don't you kick us off uh, by telling us sort of what, what you've been up to crawling around in, in uh, New York uh, with, with diaries? Uh, yeah, well, so I guess, you know, my photography practice uh, before the crisis that we're now facing uh, was 
really not so different from what I'm doing now, which is, uh, you know, a lot of wandering around New York City, taking photos of whatever strikes me and of, uh, you know, sort of combining that with a lot of personal documentary. Um, you know, it's all sort of one thing to me and always has been. And what's been really interesting for me in the um, period since this all got going uh, with the uh, coronavirus is that, um, you know, the work for me hasn't really changed, but my sense of purpose has really changed. And I, I feel a lot of drive to be doing what I'm doing. Um, but not so much from the standpoint of needing to document what's going on. It's more in reaction to my own psychology. Um, I feel like what I'm doing through this time is, uh, is really for my own mental health because uh, my life is really grounded in practice. And, you know, my definition of what it is to have a practice for many years now has been... Um, that which was taught to me, which is to have a practice is to ha have something that you do for its own sake under all circumstances. And the, the, what's been interesting is that my way of evaluating what's a, an important picture for me in my practice has tended not to be um, what a lot of other people do uh, regarding, you know, uh, telling a story or something like that. For me, it's much more uh, poetic and you know it, it dawned on me when I was talking to somebody about this the other day that you know this sort of project that I've been doing called uh, Corona Diary has been you know really uh, uh, to, to a certain extent I, I feel like I have a real role to play in this time because I feel like it's important that we have documentarians and many of my friends are incredible documentary photographers and news photographers but I feel like hard times like this are also a time for poets so um, you know I feel like maybe I have something else I can add to uh, people's visual experience or comprehension of this time but comprehension is a receding target right now we don't really know where things are going ah, thank you um, we can we uh hear a little bit about uh, where, uh, what you're doing, Priyanka, uh, in uh, New York with your, uh, your di social distancing <laughs> club. <laughs> yeah, of course, thank you. So um, uh, I'm a wedding photographer in New York City. I, I do all sorts of things. I do documentaries, street photography. Um, and I'm also in, in photography education. But now I can very confidently add, I'm a professional homeschooler as well as a professional housekeeper to the list. So there you go, a long list of um, new talents. Um, but what happened a few weeks ago when the whole COVID crisis blew up was I was seeing a lot of bad news hitting us on like WhatsApp, Messenger, the TV and um, it made me very, very despondent. Like I couldn't do anything and it was making me very anxious. Um, also my husband works um, in uh, the healthcare um, uh, sector in New York City as a physician. And that was another layer of um, stress to our lives. And um, all, a lot of my friends on like Facebook and social media were sharing photos of themselves not really being responsible at this time in terms of social distancing. They were like having play dates, going out to bars. And it made me feel very angry and sad because, you know, we, we were letting each other down as a community, as society. So I started posting a lot of pictures of myself social distancing with my family and, you know, how it was important to me. And I started posting them on social media. And a lot of people responded with very positive comments. And soon we formed a club called the FOFC Social Distancing Club. We are 600 members strong from all over the world. It's a global community social distancing together. We share one photo a day in an album. And we have two mentors who go in and um, kind of critique and discuss the photo. And then we pass uh, the baton on. Baton on. So, following day we have two new mentors who will help make our photos um, better by giving us some um, like advice so um, 
it's been such a positive way to channel my energy. I guess it's um, the photos coming out of there, which are these photos you're looking at, the, everyone's story is different. And it's so nice to know we're all in this together. And um, it's not all good, but it's also not all bad. And if we stick together, we can, uh, we can survive this. And, and also stay creative during this time because we're practicing a skill when this is over, we can hit the road running. So um, this group has been, uh, an, a, you know, absolutely um, so precious to my mental health and well-being. That's great. Beautiful photos there. Um, so next we'll go to Ganara. Uh, what have you been up to there in your little studio apartment in New York City? <laughs> uh, yep, it is a little studio. Um, so what I've been up to, uh, I've been, um, you know, it took me a minute to uh, adjust to the situation, uh, you know, I'm sure as everyone else in the world. Um, but uh, I uh, really wanted to focus on my um, mental state uh, first. You know, it's it's very easy to just just start like a lot of new projects and do you know a lot of work and do a lot of things, but uh, I. I've recognized that I need to take care of my uh, emotional and mental state first, so I can get a stronger and and adapt to uh, to what's happening. And uh, about a week ago, I had a big breakthrough, you know, and um, and what I'm doing is uh, I've been painting um, work. Uh, uh, for my uh, series called Lost Family. And uh, so that's been, you know, I haven't been, I haven't painted like in a, in a, in a while. So what I do is that I paint uh, with oil paint on my black and white pictures. And I had a collages uh, of um, old photographs from my, my family album. So what do you see now? The, those are the pictures I did so far in the last few years. Uh, but in the last week or so, I created um, three pieces, including this one. Uh, it's still drying on the wall. <laughs> it's right behind me. Uh, and I, I didn't glue it yet, but you can see. Uh, oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, I did, but, yeah, it's on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> so I just I put a tape on it, uh, just then, you know, I can readjust and see the position. It's yeah, beautiful. my second one I I did. And uh, and all those uh, inserts, the collages, that's me and my mom. So it's, it's all like a fantasy. Like what I'm doing right now is I'm creating my own family album since I don't have any family. And, and this is a fantasy of... Um, yeah, it's like my, it's like a, a fam yeah, I'm making my own family album with, with, with this, um, uh, painting the flowers and so, yeah, that's, um, and it just, it brings me, uh, it's kind of very meditative, you know, I can just stand, uh, and paint for like two or three hours at, at a time. Um, and I also, I just want to point out that I, you know, I'm a street photographer and, um, and I was really, really going through um, a difficult period of time where I uh, was really, you know, I wanted to go out and take pictures, but at the same time, I, I just decided that I don't want to do that. Uh, and it was my own personal decision. And um, so I started uh, a Facebook group uh, with um, Jimena Chagwe, another um, street photographer in New York City. Uh, she's a women's street photographer's uh, ambassador and a curator and, um, and a mentor uh, at the Women's Street Photographer's Artist Residency. So we started this uh, Facebook group uh, to collect, we call it catalog for future exhibition. 
So my idea is that when it's over, hopefully soon, uh, I would like to create a traveling exhibition um, that shows hope and endurance and um, perseverance uh, of our, you know, fight or existence during the COVID um, pandemics. And, and this group is open to any um, gender, you know, female or male. Uh, we want it to be inclusive to anyone. And yeah, it's, a, it's a new group, uh, a couple of weeks or so, or three. And um, uh, it's a small group for now. Uh, one of the things I learned from my, experience, my life experience that I don't wanna uh, rush anything and I just, I, you know, I take it slow and, um, you know, while we're all adapting. That's great. Thank you. Thank you, Gunara. These are all very, very beautiful Yeah, those photos. are the photographs from, from the, from the, from the, from the catalog. From the catalog, yes. That's great. Okay, and uh, last but not least, Angela, uh, you're out in Norfolk, Virginia, uh, with four kids running around. Yeah. <laughs> trying to work and uh, manage their creativity in isolation. Can you tell us a little bit about what you're doing? Um, so, yeah, I have four kids. Um, and sort of when all this happened, yeah, everything changed in my life. Um, you know, I went from taking kids to school and shuffling, and I also taught photography at an art school. So I'm kind of a little bit jobless. Um, I think we're going to convert the art school to online so we're trying to brainstorm some stuff with that um i do family documentaries so photographing my family at home is um is something i do all the time so to transition it for covid was fairly easy i see things differently though now so i'm shooting a little differently um and so I just kind of transitioned my shooting within my family. I'm not really leaving the house. Like my husband won't let me go anywhere because I've been sick. So I, um, I've been really confined to the house for the past three weeks, which has been um, hard um, being somewhat social. So I also am doing a, a self portrait a day with my iPhone and they're quirky and fun and, and, really just found places. I'm, I'm not doing a lot of conceptual work with it. I just do it because it makes me laugh. Um, what else am I doing? I have started photographing high school seniors, um, but now that we've got the stay in order, like we have to stay in our house, I think that might not happen anymore. So I'm a little sad about that, but we had a lot of seniors at the art school that I taught at who were missing prom, so I was doing front porch pictures of them in their prom dresses um, from way past six feet, um, about 10 feet away at least, because my husband's not letting me out of the house. Um, yeah, and um, you know, taking pictures, like Ruben said, is just, um, it's how I process my emotions. It's, um, it's part of my daily practice, so if I'm not making pictures, um, then I find myself getting really sad and depressed. So I just try and pick up the camera every day. And, and some pictures are of my family and sometimes they're just on how I feel about things and the way they're going on. And you know, every day for me is I have highs and lows. So some are really sad and some are fun um, because my house is chaotic all the time right now. Yeah. These are great pictures of the, the prom dress uh, at the, on the porch. <laughs> That's great. Uh, thank you. Um, so uh, we do have a few questions, but before that, I actually have uh, some, uh, I was telling you all that I had some emotionally draining questions. So one of them um, is, you know, uh, Carl Jung talked about knowing your own darkness uh, is a best method for dealing with the darkness of other people. Do you find that, um, you know, as an artist, uh, that it, it is, you know, in isolation, in the challenges that you do have, is that give you a little bit more of that sense of uh, how do you uh, uh, deal with other people's, you know, understanding other people's uh, uh, 
darkness as you go out and do fo photos uh, with Ruben or even at a distance uh, with Angela and uh, and whatnot. So uh, anybody? Uh, well, I mean, I feel like um, the the darkness that I really have uh, a hard time with is the darkness I feel when I'm uh, inside before I go out to photograph. Uh, every day I wake up thinking maybe I'm not going to go out today because uh, there's so much to be afraid of or um, because I have so much anxiety about how other people are going to feel about my being out photographing, whether it's the people I'm photographing or people in my life who are worried about me being outside. Um, you know, but the thing I find is that once I get out, uh, I am experiencing real things, not the stuff that's in my head. You know, what's in my head is, is feelings, it's expectations, it's fears, it's, you know, all, all imaginary, really. Um, and when I'm out on the street, I actually find that even the scary stuff isn't so bad because it's real. You know, and that, that for me has been really key. You know, once I go out, you know, at first it was within about 15 minutes I would feel like myself. And, you know, lately it's taken longer, you know. It really depends on what I encounter and, and what I start out feeling. But, um, you know, it, it's been incredibly great for me by the time I come home, you know, whether it's two hours or six hours later, uh, I feel... Uh, much clearer about the the beauty of life, you know, which hasn't gone away, despite this difficult situation. I mean, to me, the most difficult thing about it, you know, being currently healthy myself and the people I'm closest to being healthy, the most difficult thing about it is all uh, emotional and mental and, um, you know, all about worrying about what's going to happen next, you know, because the story seems to change every day. You know, and, and, you know, we make a lot of uh, predictions and, and uh, you know, come up with a lot of ideas about what's going to happen, but we really don't know day to day. Anybody else? Well, that's why I think it's important to, to take care of your mental state first and, and recognize what you feel, feeling. You know, you can go through stages of anger or sadness or grief or you know, loss and or happiness or, you know, what, whatever, or guilt. I mean, there's just so many emotions and it's just so important from my own experience who, who have PTSD and who had depression in the past, you know, it's, it's so important to recognize this and, and, and deal it with it as it, as it, as it is, uh, as it comes. Like for me, as I mentioned, like I don't go out and shoot and I told myself it's okay. You know it's okay um, because um, because you know I don't feel it. Uh, well, Ganara, you you um, the other big uh, crisis event that happened in New York was the 9/11, and you were out there, uh, and uh, you know that photo that you took uh, is is uh, <laughs> um, very powerful. Uh, is there a difference that that I guess you're saying you're not going out, but do you feel that this crisis has a, a very different feel to it than, than the 9-11 that you did experience? You know, I've been thinking about it a lot, actually, and I've been talking to um, my friends, uh, photojournalist friends who are, who, who, who were um, covering 9-11. And uh, it's, you know, I don't even know. I mean, it's, this time, I don't go out, and and I, I I actually don't go out. Period. I mean, today I just went out for like a few minutes, um, because you know in my home I feel you know secured, like in my in my blanket. I I feel it. You know, I have everything I need, uh, and I you know I've been working from home for for a while now. I have a lot of projects I need to work on. You know, I have a I have a book I'm working on, um, 
So I am, you know, quite busy, you know, curating an exhibition that is coming up in, in Russia in, in July. And hopefully, you know, it's, it's still happening. So um, <laughs> to me, it doesn't feel, um, I guess what I'm saying is that I, it feels somewhat normal, although it's not normal because obviously it's not normal. And <coughs> excuse me. Um, it took me, I, I guess I'm taking it um, better because after 9-11, I learned so much. I went, I had, I had loss, I had um, injuries. And I mean, I had like, you know, it was very traumatic for me. Um, and I've, I've worked so hard for so many years. So I have the tools I'm using to overcome, um, you know, whatever, I, whatever I'm feeling. And one of the things I do is that I talk to my friends, like to me, it's the most important thing. Like sometimes I don't do anything all day and I just talk with my friends because right now, uh, this is for me important to feel that I have my friends and I know what's happening in their life and they know what's happening in my life. You know, I meditate, I do Pilates, I connect with friends. I mean, to me, this is, especially when we are in, in isolation and for me as an introvert, uh, I'm making an effort to just like be on WhatsApp or Skype or, you know, FaceTime. Thank you. Um, there is a question here uh, for Angela uh, on the question list. Uh, do you do your children ever refuse to be uh, photographed, and how do you handle that? Uh, feeling strongly needing permission, but realize sometimes that the best thing is comes from struggle and tension. <laughs> um, so, if my kids are strongly saying no, I don't take the picture. With my at home stuff, I shoot with the Fuji X one hundred F. And it has a leaf shutter. So it's pretty amazing that I'm shooting, I'm making pictures and they don't even, well, okay, most people don't know it. My kids know it because they know me so well. Um, so they do know that. And a lot of the times they still allow me to photograph them. We just have discussions about where I can post it and where I can't post it. So um, I had a solo exhibition um, in January and it was all of my family stuff and I, went through all of my kids and asked them before any image was up on the wall because essentially it's a collaboration between my children and I, and I want their respect. Uh, so I don't ever, um, I've never posted anything. Every once in a while, one of my kids will see a picture in a magazine or you're, you know, somewhere and they're like, mom, really? Like, I hate that picture. But so yeah, so um, I always try to give them respect, I guess that's, that's my thing. And um, yeah. <laughs> And then um, I keep on shooting. <laughs> yeah. Um, so there's apparently you're popular. There's another question for you about your self-portrait photo a day project. Uh, that it's a wonderful way to express your emotions. Uh, is yeah. that how, how you see it uh, as well? Um, and that uh, sh says I see a shadow a day project there too. <laughs> uh, and then they were asking what kind of uh, some of the ideas that you might suggest uh, to photograph students if if uh, right now it's you know in their homes uh, that may uh, yeah things to do. It, um, yeah. So um, I was just actually brainstorming this with um, with my boss, and one of the things that we came up with was um, because we teach art students in general. We talked about there's that thing going around where. Um, people are recreating art for museums with things in their home. So we thought about having our students do that. Um, as a photographer, I would recommend having them photograph just a day in their life, you know, make it 10 images or start photographing feelings. Or sometimes like um, I did a color challenge about a month ago and um, pick a color a day and focus on a color a day. Sometimes I think when, we're so overwhelmed with emotion. And, and for me right now, that's kind of how I feel a lot is like, I feel stressful and anxious that it's really easy for me to just say, okay, I'm gonna make one self portrait a day with my iPhone 
I'm not setting anything up. If you guys look at these, I'm in the same leggings that I've been wearing for like three days. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm not doing anything. I'm just, um, I just find a place and I might rearrange some couch cushions or something and then I photograph. But a lot of it is, it is feeling trapped. Um, I'm an introverted extrovert. So the extroverted person in me is really screaming right now. So it, it's, it helps. Um, and I try and make everything really simple. So I would recommend making it super simple and even having them photograph their phones because not everyone has what I, like a, a camera and not everyone has editing software. So those things would, would be my recommendations. Mm, that's great. Uh, so Priyanka, the, there's a couple of chats going on about uh, FOFC, Friends of Fearless Conference. Uh, tell us a little bit about what is a fearless photographer? Uh, those of us that went to the Focus on the Story uh, uh, Festival last year know what it is, but maybe uh, for the rest of the audience, maybe you could explain a little bit what's the fearless uh, photographer yeah. and fearless their friends are. Yeah, fearless photographers is um, a group started by uh, Wee Wen, who is um, an ex-documentary photographer and now educator. And he started this um, like a directory of photographers who are fearless. So they do something out of the ordinary. They have a very unique way of seeing things or they find really beautiful light and make out of the world surreal portraits and documentary photos. So it's like a, a different perspective of something that you've seen done over and over. And you're taking like the extra mile to, to do a different angle and something. Um, so fearless photographers has like an annual a photography conference all over the world. This year it was supposed to be in Greece. Unfortunately, you know, it was canceled, postponed. Uh, but it's going more to Europe now and a bunch of the younger um, photographers started a Friends of Fearless con Photographers Conference to keep the community within the, uh, you know, Americas, Canada and America uh, still engaging and, you know, um, to bring everyone together and discuss and uh, host talks. So this Friends of Fearless um, conference is hosted by Ilana and Danny, and I uh, am friends with them. So we jointly started this group for social distancing. Um, that's great. So I think uh, it, it is also uh, at a time of crisis, uh, there's some fearlessness that we need. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, what I like is that they have discussions. Uh, I mean, I'm also a member and I spoke mm -hmm. at the conference uh, as well. But what I like is that they have uh, critique, critiques, which is like so exciting. And, uh, and, and um, you know, you take pictures and then you get a critique and you can retake this picture. I, I love it. Yeah, I totally agree. I mean, I, I love it too. And I'm a member of that group. And I, I try and post images every day and I love getting critiqued. Um, I think it gives us something to look forward to. And that is really nice when, you know, and it gives the extroverted person and it's just like a little bit of social inter interaction with other people. So. Yeah, I'm also question. monitoring this, that group because I, you know, when I do my exhibition, <laughs> I'm going to writing a lot of photographers from in that group. <laughs> and actually a lot of photographers and editors are coming in like every, like I let members join. So I see like reporters, like, you know, all sorts of press people coming in to, um, um, to ask for photo permissions to share the photos and stuff so it's it's uh, very valuable in, like information on there it's like a directory of social distancing like globally and it's so crazy because some moments are like so subtle and um, nothing is happening it's like this Wes Anderson apartment and the wife is sunbathing in one corner and the sun is staring out the window and it's like you know frozen in time in Italy and, and the other photo is like a child falling apart and the mom is drinking wine. You know, it's just so contrasting everyone's, you know, social and geographical story. It's so, so interesting. And two mentors come in every day and mentor. So it's nice if you're interested ever to get into the educational aspect of photography, then you might get a turn to be a mentor and actually go through photos and discuss them and help people. So. Mm. 
it's a very shared, equally balanced kind of community. Um, I, I'm so, interested in, in hearing from from Ruben a little a little bit about the, um, the 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 prospect of going out into the city. I mean, the city. I know a, a couple of you are not going out, Gulnara, and I don't believe Priyanka is going out, but in Angela in your neighborhood. But but Ruben, you're wandering all over the city, and and I mean, do you feel like a should you be out there, and b are you fearful that you're going to um, you know catch the virus well it's really great that you brought up the word fearful because i kept thinking about that when we were talking about fearless photographers that you know um i also teach i teach workshops and and um and other things and you know the the question i'm constantly asked you know by aspiring street photographers is how to get over your fear and what i find is that uh the fear maybe never goes away. You know, like I've been doing this for a lot of years now and I feel afraid, you know, even without COVID-19 happening, I feel afraid uh, when I'm out shooting, but it doesn't stop me. And that, sometimes that fear is even helpful. It drives me to different things than, than uh, fearlessness or confidence would. So I actually find, um, that if I were to wait for fear to not be with me, uh, I'd have a very long wait and I wouldn't get any photographing done. So, you know, I, I, this isn't a commentary at all on what other people are doing because I think it's really, really cool. But, you know, it, it, my practice um, is really all about uh, maybe questioning whether my fear is warranted uh, and just you know, I can live with that, you know, and by the end of the day, I do feel less afraid. Uh, but to really address your question about whether people should be out photographing, I wouldn't presume to tell anyone else what they should be doing. Probably I shouldn't be, but I don't think that it's reckless. You know, uh, you know, it's interesting that I do get some people raising a concern about my being out but those people are not out they're not seeing what i'm seeing and it's incredibly easy right now to not be near another human being in new york city more than any time ever and i've been here 31 years you know it's like nothing i've ever seen before i you know yesterday i walked down the middle of 42nd street uh between fifth and sixth avenues um in the middle of the day and I mean, it's incredibly easy to not be near anybody. Uh, it's possible that I'm at some risk, but it's, you know, it doesn't really feel anywhere as near as risky as I think what would happen to me if I stayed inside. Now, if I was forced to, you know, I'd stay inside and I'd understand that that's necessary, but it doesn't feel necessary right now. Uh, there, there is a question. Uh, I think Chris Suspeg is asking, "How are, are you wearing a mask uh, at all? An N95 mask?" I think he's asking, and you know, not an N95. So. I have, I have a mask that I've worn part of the time, but it really, it really depends. You know, if I'm, if I'm nearer to people, then you know, I feel like that's perhaps warranted, but otherwise, no. You know, the, the virus doesn't travel around the outdoors in a cloud. You know, it's, it doesn't work like that. I mean, I've, I've read, I, you know, I think if anyone thinks that I'm doing this cavalierly or, or without, you know, reading, I mean, the, the virus is on my mind 24 hours a day. It's literally in my dreams with me. So, you know, that's one of the reasons that, you know, every day on social media, I post several photos of what I did the day before, um, calling it a Corona diary. And, you know, there's a reason besides art that I don't caption those things or give a lot of explanation or, or narration of what I'm doing, because I don't really want it to be a discussion, because as soon as it is, then it's all about masks or, you know, gloves and, you know, all of these sort of procedural things that it's, you know, it might as well be what lens are you using, you know, gear talk, you know, I've never been interested in such a thing, you know, so I mean, if, to me, what's interesting is what's happening in our world. To me, what's interesting is that I have this 30 year relationship with this city. I've lived through so many things here and watched this city adapt to incredible stuff. When I walk around this city, I see 
this incredible adaptation going on. Some people are adapting by staying inside. Some people are adapting by altering how they let people into their grocery stores and, and people are being incredibly cooperative about stuff like that. And then I also see things like the street skateboarders who are just killing it. I mean, they're loving this time because their, their city is now just this open playground. I, I was at Coney Island today. I saw these guys in this parking lot who were taking turns, keeping a distance from each other, but taking turns grinding these, these curbs and medians and, and platforms. And it was like, I felt like, yeah, that's a, that's street photographers right there. You know, they look around the, the, the empty city and they see opportunity and they, and it comes like a, a physical desire, you know, like it, like a hunger that you see something and you go, I've got to have that. I've got to grind that rail or I've got to take that picture of that thing. And like, how do you reason with that? How do you say, like, well, what's right? What's wrong? Like, I won't consciously do something to endanger other people. I won't do something consciously to endanger my wife, who, you know, I come home to every day. So, you know, I try to be conscientious, and I hope everyone else is too. But, you know, we all have to make these decisions for ourselves. For some people's mental health, it's important to stay home. For my mental health, I have to get out. Well, let, you know? let me ask Priyanka and Gulnara who are dealing with other photographers around the world. I mean, how do you, how is anxiety sort of surfacing up in people's art? Are you, are, do you, do you see it manifesting in, in the way that, that, that they're creating art? Uh, you know, the anxiety and the fear that, that people are feel, feeling? Well, I, I have a, a, a several students and, and friends who are, you know, street photographers or other, other artists and, uh, um, a lot of them confused, you know, because they're street photographers and, you know, there are no people, they take pictures of people. Um, I tell them, you know, just consider yourself as a documentary photographer. If you go out and take pictures, you know, take pictures of what you see. Um, and also, this is a, a great time to to learn your skill, learn your camera, learn your you know, um, flash or learn Lightroom. I mean, there's a, and then when you, when you have the uh, knowledge of your equipment, then when you go out and you take better pictures. And there's tons and tons of free education out there. Like, yeah, this is like education paradise right here. Nobody's charging and it's just such a sharing community. There is, um, am I allowed to name a few? Okay. Sure, go ahead. Yeah, there's like the Magmod community, like when Lara said, if you're interested in, you know, working on your lighting, they have tutorials, um, how to do it, kind of tutorial from SLR Lounge, things like that. There's Workin Workshops, W-I-R-K-I-N, which is, who is our tech tailor working, who's really talented documentary photographer and he's doing free workshops. Two Man has free workshops and they're like some of the most amazing photographers in the world. Um, we have round tables where we interview lots of photographers and we um, take questions and we share skill sets. So this is the best time to just do a little um, browse and find things that you want to work on and better your skill set. Yeah, and I think, um, yeah. oh, keep on, go ahead. I think ICP is doing um, free um, like talks um, once a week or once every two weeks too. Um, David Adu Shemin, I don't know if I'm saying his last name right, but he has all of these really great um, photography books and he's selling them all for 20 bucks. Wow. Um, so there is, so if I didn't have four kids, I would really be learning so much, but I'm not because I'm homeschooling them and cooking for them and cleaning them. Here you go. <laughs> I also do, uh, <laughs> once a week, I do uh, on, on women's, uh, women's Street Photographers Instagram account, uh, once a week I do uh, Q and A's live. Uh, and which I really, really enjoy. And um, I get to, to uh, I get to hear from uh, 
all the followers who are like maybe 80% are not from United States. So they're from all over the world. And uh, yeah, I mean, the mood, everyone is, you know, confused and how, you know, what to do with how to take pictures. And right now it's, it's, it's getting ready, you know, getting ready mentally, getting ready uh, in theory and knowing your gear, knowing, knowing, knowing yourself, you know, and just give yourself time to just to adjust and adapt. I think that's a very important. Um, there's a question uh, for Ruben. Um, devastation in New York is so tragic and far-reaching. How do you decide which aspect to focus on? Hmm. Well, that's an interesting question. Um, first, first of all, I don't. You know, I I don't really go out in search of um, a, a particular aspect. Uh, sometimes they strike me as I'm out working. Um, for me, the whole point of what I'm doing is separate from what I mostly see documentary and news photographers doing, which is finding pictures that illustrate stories we already know. You know, the, the story of, say, you know, a hospital being built in Central Park, right? So we know this is happening, so someone takes pictures of it, right, to show it to us. This is valuable. I'm not uh, putting it down. But I feel like other people are doing that and doing it really well. And it doesn't come as naturally to me as letting another kind of, uh, if not stories, like another kind of aspect of today's situation find me. So I find that by putting myself out into the world and, you know, the, how does one make a decision at that point? There, you know, you don't know, like any corner you turn might be the right one or the wrong one. And, um, you know, for all I know, I'm missing the greatest aspect of the story by not staying home. But, um, you know, like I just kind of let my uh, intuition take me somewhere. And um, it's I, the only thing I've been really conscious of uh, since this keeps happening, since, you know, this situation keeps happening if it ended maybe i would change this but i'm trying to at least start off with the intent to go somewhere a little different each day from where i went before so if one day i was in midtown uh, manhattan then the next day i might stay you know more in south brooklyn or something and today i uh for whatever reason you know the the um maybe it was because the weather was so much better today than it has been i got this uh, jolt of inspiration to go to Coney Island and um, you know it's really the off season there anyway um, but it being such a nice day and it being such an interesting situation you know it's a, a lot of open space there a lot of open public space so I figured you know probably some people are going there or if not that's interesting too you know, it's one of the things I find so um, peculiar and in a way energizing about photographing in this time is that being in this time, it's like everything looks interesting to me. You know, if there's nobody around, that's interesting. And if there's people around, that's interesting. You know, if they're wearing masks, that's peculiar and interesting. And if they're not, well, that's also interesting, right? I mean, that's, that's a really unmoored place to come from as a photographer because I'm used to evaluating my experience as it's happening and deciding on what to photograph based on that evaluation. And that evaluation is, in my case, based a lot on looking for things that don't fit, you know, things that are unusual or weird or funny or, um, you know, or, or just strike me in some way. And right now, everything strikes me. Um, so. In, in a way, like, I feel like a kid in a candy store, I want to take pictures of everything. But at the same time, I feel like, well, I must be taking a lot of garbage, like way more than I usually do, which is, you know, a lot. But um, right now, I feel like, how would I possibly evaluate what's meaningful right now? Like, everything feels meaningful, and at the same time, nothing does, right? So that's much a much different proposition than for the documentarian who needs to illustrate a certain kind of story. I'm going out, 
you know, letting it discover me and finding, like leaving that to late, like maybe later I'm gonna figure out like, oh, this is what it was all about for me. You know, I mean, there's a certain meaning I can attach to things right now, but I'm also very aware that we don't know the end of this yet. You know, when I hear people talk about, um, you know, when this is all over, dot, 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 like that's a, a beginning of sentences I hear a lot. But you know, I don't think that the way this is going to end is going to be like this kind of moment where it just like, okay, after this date, we are no longer in the pandemic. It's like things will happen in stages. Different things will come back before others and some things maybe never come back and some things maybe just morph into something else. So I'm just taking it day by day. Let me uh, break in and, and see if this works. I'm going to un unmute um, Mark F. Mark F., if you're out there, I'm about ready to unmute you. Please, uh, please go ahead and ask your question. Thank you. Um, so this is for any panelists. First of all, can you hear me? Yes. yes. Okay. Yes. Um, so I, it just occurred to me listening to uh, all of the talent that's assembled here, uh, could one of the opportunities be an opportunity for um, constructive criticism and feedback specifically, I've often wondered whether uh, Liz Lehrman's critical response process, which, which came out of the dance world but could go in many different directions, could provide a respectful structure, a safe structure for um, uh, people to have their work uh, constructively criticized both positive feedback and negative feedback um, uh, during this time. I, as far as I know, there's no reason it couldn't be adapted to the online world and maybe it already is being used this way. I think some people are, yeah. Yeah, if, if that was a, you know, a viable thing. So, so thank you for saying that. At least now I know it's it's, it's leaked into the photography world. <laughs> well, at least in my case, yeah, I can say it, I'm a big fan of Liz Lerman and, and of the, her critical response theory. I'm, I couldn't claim to be an expert on it, but I, I am definitely familiar and I had the great pleasure of seeing her speak at length a, a couple years ago at a, a conference here in New York that where I was there to photograph and I didn't know much about her at all. And um, I'd heard of her, but that was it. And she was one of the uh, big speakers at the conference, and, and I was just amazed by her. She's really terrific. And, and for those who don't know it, her uh, critical response uh, method is uh, it is really a, a, a polar opposite from a lot of what happens in art schools with uh, crits. Um, and really, I, I don't want to misrepresent her, so I'm not going to get into a lot of explanation of it, but just suffice to say to Mark F. there that um, that's something that I definitely, uh, at least in my own way, I try to bring to the workshops that I teach when we get into anything resembling crit. Okay. Um, Mona Avalos, are you there? Mona. Yeah, I'm here. Go ahead. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. Um, thanks, Al, for uh, being on the call tonight. Uh, so my question was, which um, a few of you had kind of already answered it, I was just looking for ways to uh, engage with all of you uh, on social media, like submitting photos, but not via Instagram or Facebook, because currently that's not a healthy place for me to be. Um, so I was just wondering if there were other ideas on how I could join those groups um, that are currently posting photos because I'm finding it really hard to be motivated since I'm not engaging with, you know, with the community anymore on social media. Um, I think there's a blog and I'm going to look on my computer right now because I think I have it open. That's called six feet. Um, it's like six feet apart or something like that. I can't quite remember the name, but I can get the link and, and I'm sure Joe can pass it along. But it is a blog that's taking submissions um, that is, you know, based on COVID-19 and, you know, a bunch of photographers are submitting to it. I just found it today. So that might be a good avenue for you to, to try. I also... Um... I have a current exhibition uh, call to a uh, women's street photographers exhibition. 
and the deadline is April 6th, I think. And um, I encourage all women to, to submit their pictures because you know it, it gives you an opportunity to go through your archive and see what you have. Uh, and uh, if you submit 10 or more photographs, I give a feedback. Uh, what I do usually is, is via Skype or I record a video. Uh, this time I want to actually try something new. I will record a video and go through each picture, each submission, uh, and give a, a constructive criti criticism. And if you're part of the Women's Street Photographers exhibition, uh, then you get to be uh, shown in the website, womenstreetphotographers.com. Uh, and it's also good exposure because I'm working on the book, <laughs> Women's Street Photographers book. Um, yeah, I'm currently researching all the dedicated street photographers. Is um, Maria, Danielle Balcazar on. Maria, you are unmuted. Looks like she is mute, still mute, muted. All right. Well, I know Maria very well. Now I'm, now I'm there. Okay. There. Hi, how are you? Yeah, I had a question um, to, uh, um, how does it feel, or at least how did it feel the first time you painted in, in top of a photograph? Oh, it's for me question? Yes. Um, my goodness, that was a long time ago. I started hand painting my photographs, um, believe it or not, in the late 80s. Oh, so uh, yeah. Yes, I've been, um, uh, yeah, that's when I started uh, painting photographs uh, after seeing um, a big exhibition in Moscow, Gilbert and George. And, um, you know, I was just doing black and white photography at the time, you know, film and stuff. But when I saw their massive, large art that they hand painted, and it gave me, uh, it just opened my eyes into, uh, it just gave me an opportunity to think outside of just black and white photography and express my own feelings and what I was going through uh, at the time during the Soviet Union. And uh, what I do is it just, I. I, well, first of all, I love the, 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 to have a paint. I'm not a trained painter at all. I don't claim to be a painter. So painting and photograph is, is just, again, you know, expressing, um, at, you know, with my current uh, series, uh, Lost Family, just ex expressing my, my fantasy. And, uh, and it's just, it's soothing and, and, um, meditating and and it's just uh it's, it feels good you know it feels good to create something with your hands not just on the computer you know we can all do photoshop um collages montages you know whatever but um it's something i, I feel i feel what i'm creating is just like really fine art you know, and for me, it's important uh, because yeah, I've been doing it for 40 years now and um, photography, I mean, and I restarted doing um, hand painted photographs a few years ago uh, after I met Marilyn Mark and she just encouraged me to continue. And then I've been doing it since. Great. Did I answer? <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Stacy Lewis, are you uh, there? Stacy, you, you are unmuted. Still with us, Stacy? She's still muted, looks like. Okay. There she oh, is. Oh, there, oh. there you um, go. I think I, yeah, I think the, the question that I had was for Ruben, asking him about the, um, how he kind of handled the whole tragedy in New York and what, he, what aspect he focused on. That was my one major question that I had. Great. Thank you. Yeah. I guess she would. She their original question was, "How do you decide what aspect of, of yeah. what's happening in New York to to focus on?" Yeah, I, I think I answered that. Yeah. 
Awesome. That's my fault. The um, there's there was a question here about how to how do you post your picture in in so in the social distancing group, uh, Priyanka. Yeah, so you first join the social distancing group, and um, usually if you're friends with one of the admin people, or if you're uh, a member of any of the groups that we all are members of, it adds you. If not, I can come in and approve your uh, your membership. Um, and then you just kind of find today's gallery, like is it April 1st. And you just drop your photo that you want, just one photo that you think is representing of your idea and uh, for, you know, it's your social distancing story. You drop it in there and then the following day tomorrow, we have two mentors who come in and will uh, put a gallery together of all the photos submitted today and we'll kind of talk about it. And you do that on- Can I also add that you can also do the same thing for the catalog? from my Facebook catalog for a future exhibition. Yeah, so Gulnara is doing the same exact thing, but there's no CC, right? There's no creative no. criticism. And um, so Gulnara's group, you can submit either social distancing and also like um, any of this, like street photography, documentary photography, any like action shots that show the entire COVID story. In, in our group, we are just doing social distancing. We, uh, we're not really encouraging people to go out unless you have to go to the grocery store. Oh, we don't encourage either. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, yeah, we're not we encouraging do, anybody to go out. And no. on the topic of like, you know, where do you draw the line? We've had this conversation before. Sorry, this is slightly off topic, but um, we, people always ask like, you know, can I shoot this, can I shoot that? And we're like, as long as you think you're being responsible, this is your individual responsibility, right? You affecting anyone or yourself. If you're going out for an errand and you have to go, like take your camera by all means, um, stay away from people and shoot because you're part of this world and you're a photographer who tells stories, so why not? Um, so I, I have uh, uh, another deep question. Is isolation a necessity for creativity? You know, blocking distractions. Uh, I think I uh, called to mind Frida Kahlo who, who had to be isolated and he, she, you know, some of her more, most creative uh, juices were flowing when she was being isolated uh, because of her health. Uh, but do you guys have any thoughts about creativity in isolation, so um, the, su the subject of our, our panel tonight? Well, I guess I could say for me, I'm isolated, but I'm isolated with a lot of chaos. So I am not finding, I find that I'm most creative if I can get in the car and drive alone, Ooh. or if I'm in the shower. So those little bits of alone time that I get, I do find that I'm a lot more creative than, um, I feel like when I'm with my family and I'm sort of documenting or I'm feeling, so those are kind of a little different than being a little bit more conceptual about my work. Um, yeah, but the isolation is, is hard. <laughs> I well, I, I live alone uh, and I, you know, I'm, as I said, introvert and, and um, I'm okay just to, to work at home all day without going out. Uh, and uh, I, I feel like I'm super creative right now. I mean, just ideas, I, I'm just like full of, I, I have a bucket of ideas and I just like, I need time. I don't even have enough time. Um, and what I also find that slowing down and meditation is also, brings uh, my creativity in, in place, you know, especially now there's just so much chaos. I have, if I'm still, it's, it's like in the, you know, it's like a library, it's like a bookshelf, right? And, and all the books just fell on, on the ground, on the floor, and it, there's a big mess, and it's just a big pile. But as long as, you, uh, as soon as you put them on the shelf, and it's just all like nice, and then one line, and it just, it, takes much less space. And this is for me a meditation. When I'm still, I have like bazillions, bazillions ideas when I'm still and just listening and everything is just goes in places. And 
and that's how you know I come up with the, all these ideas that I have, and 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 in and with the paintings as well. Like I did three paintings in the last four days. Wow. Like I can I can be like three weeks. I can like do nothing literally, but nothing quote unquote because I'm always thinking, you know. And then I, like I have to be inspired. Like they, when inspiration hits me, I'm like. Okay, I'm I'm ready. <laughs> so it's so interesting to me when this whole panel was first proposed. How the the title for me puts me into this interesting mode of thinking because I don't ever really find myself thinking about creativity. You know that that's something that I never really ponder because to me creativity for me is a is sort of a state that comes and goes. But what leads me to it is my practice right which is every day right i don't ever not do my practice and you know that that would it be the same for me if i couldn't go out on the street right if i'm at home and i've included some photos like this in the corona diary of like you know still lifes of my dining table or of you know the view out my uh, kitchen window things like that that strike me in a, a a certain way and so for me like if I waited for or needed to invoke some state of creativity I'd really be sunk you know because I I've tried you know in the past to you know be someone who you know uh, had some ways to you know lead myself to creativity whether it's looking at other people's work or you know reading the right thing or whatever and it just that to me was just another way to stay stuck you know in the younger days when i found myself stuck and i'm never stuck now sometimes it means i make really lousy work but i'm always making and that making is what makes my life worthwhile it's like um even the days where I make bad work is good practice for the days where the, the better ideas come, right? And I think others here have alluded to that too, that, you know, it isn't just about like having your brilliant idea and, you know, uh, writing the great American novel or, or, you know, making the next great American iconic photograph. It's like, it's showing up day in, day out. And that can be whatever you need it to be. You know, that can be staying in your apartment. That can be walking the street 10 miles like I did a couple of Saturdays ago. You know, it's, it's um, but it's something for me that has to happen uh, every day. You know, it has to be all the time. Otherwise I'm looking for inspiration and I can't wait for that. For, for me, it's, um... I'm, I'm isolated with two very young kids, the three and five, and the stuff that they do is getting to, we've been social distancing for 18 days now, and it's getting ridiculous. Like, they're really running out of ideas, and they're like trashing up the place. They built a fort out of every single pillow blanket and fabric, anything that folds in our two-bedroom apartment, and they build a massive mouse nest. So it's not my creativity, but it's like a joint creativity with what the situation is. That I'm photographing these things that we are making together, but I'm, and I have the time to photograph it in a very creative way because I'm not going anywhere. So I brought all my studio lights out. I, I was, I really had fun with it. So in, in that sense, I've never been in this situation before where I'm stuck with. Um, some very creative kids and I'm trying to make the most of it. So um, yeah, for me, it's turning out to be very, very creative. What, what do you tell Probably. people that are in your group that are out there at home by themselves and they don't have kids and, and um, they don't really see anybody, don't go out much. How, how are you coaxing them or how are you working them yes, through the process? Question. Self portraits and actually Angela is coming to help me out. Angela is going to be talking about self-portraits next week. And we've this whole week, we've had three speakers on self-portraits. And I would say like 50% of the photos coming in are from either people living with roommates or single people, um, or even people living with their parents. And they can only take that many photos of their parents before they get freaked out. So 
they're including themselves in the narrative. And I started doing that too. So I, Angela is the best person for this, but what I've gathered from, you know, our chats is camera on a very, you know, neutral spot where you want a strong composition and then you just put it on like, um, shoot every 10 seconds, like 200 frames or whatever. And then you just go about your day and just see what you get. And then maybe move it to a more interesting composition or something different and include yourself in the narrative. So yeah, or like Angela does, like set it up and make something conceptual. And But shoot, like tons of people, the selfie phenomena is gonna blow up right now. <laughs> And I agree, the self-portraits are, um, it's just fun. Um, and I, I'm making it really simple um, because I'm shooting with my phone. Um, I, I am not, I'm not using a tripod, but I have a bunch of kids who can model for me. So that helps, um, or be my photographer, like this one was my photographer today for a little while. Um, and I'm just doing found places. Sometimes I might have a concept, but I am keeping it very simple because I find life is so overwhelming for me right now with so many different things that just doing it this way is easier for me. I'm gonna um, unmute uh, Stefan. Stefan, are you, are you there? I'm going to, um, uh, hold on, I just lost you when I shared my screen. I have to stop sharing my screen, sorry about that. Um, Stefan, you're, you're off mute. Hi, Joe. How are you? Great. Good. Thank you so much. You know, I'm sitting here listening to this discussion and I'll make everybody laugh with this one since everybody's been uh, isolated so much. I'm sitting in my sunroom here in Ramsey, New Jersey, freezing my toes off because it's the only room I could get some privacy in at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm sitting out here listening to you guys for an hour and a half now and I wouldn't move and my son just came out and said dad I need you to come in here and I said no I'm not coming in there I'm listening to this absolutely fabulous you know incredible discussion for an hour and a half he says no I need you in here now I said later goodbye because <laughs> I'm not moving from this because I have to tell you I have I'm an ex-photo editor at the New York Times. I was there for 20 years, 15 years of which as a supervising photo editor for the wire service. And um, I have seen and edited pretty much it all, I would consider it over those years. And now 10 years on my own as a social media and visual consultant. And I teach at FIT and a bunch of other things. But why I wanted to come on was give you guys a round of applause and thanks for sharing this soul bearing insight into your lives right now and and what you have been trying to accomplish what not what you're trying to accomplish what you have accomplished so far and what you're sharing with everybody which more than anything what's so important is is how you're dealing with this because this is something that none of us in our lifetime would ever have imagined and that we have never dealt with. So where 9-11 happened, for instance, we, you guys were talking earlier, I experienced 9-11 right across the street from the towers. Um, I documented the NYPD for 10 years as a photographer and uh, at, at, while I was a photo editor at the Times. And when 9-11 happened, the aftermath of that, even with all of the death and despair and, and then the uprising of New York City and the country, this is something that is unforeseen, that we, we can't see this, it's a virus. So it's something that's you know, taking an, a toll on the anxiety and people's lives right now that is different than something that was physical and where something happened literally right in front of our eyes that time. This is an unfor unforeseen enemy. And it's very difficult to deal with a lot of, for a lot of people, especially the isolation. But you guys, with your creativity and your drive and your inner spirits to do all your different work and now bring it to the world, you guys uh, focus on the story by putting this on the air here and letting everybody see. I, I just personally thank you for bringing me on and for being, uh, letting me say this. I know it wasn't a question, it's a statement. But uh, you guys, you know, are phenomenal. I love the groups that you're creating because that's also very important. 
I mean, it's so important right now. The Like uh, one of you were saying, there's a ton, a few of you were saying, there's a ton of educational opportunities out there. I've never seen this before. But this is a defining moment in our lifetime for people to be able to share. This is not a moment for branding. This is not a moment for marketing. And shame on those that are. And I applaud those that are simply giving and trying to educate and enhance and uplift society right now, including you guys. And the final thing I'll say is that I want everybody to really think about this as a social media and visual consultant that I am, a strategist. I work with the Pulitzer Prizes, covering them live every year. This is, this is something where we should all be learning new technology. And you guys focus on the story. I'm going to be honest. I had not heard of you guys. But now you've got a big fan here. And I will spread the word because we all have to learn this new technology. And by bringing on these teleconferences and other live streams and doing this all, and we're all learning it at the same time here. Some of us may have been ahead of the curve and some of us are behind the curve, but we're all learning it and uh, we're all going to come out of this okay. And I just wanted to say thank you to all of you. Thank you so much, thank Stefan. You. Thanks, Stefan. Thank you so much. I, I want to repeat what he said too. I mean, I think the, the fact that you have these groups and just giving people an, uh, a platform and an outlet to express themselves, to just connect, um, you know, it's not all about editing photos, is it, Priyanka? <laughs> no, I mean, with our group? Yeah. No, we try not to CC the editing too much. Um, we just say, like, a quick mobile phone. I mean, it's like and, a support group, too, right? I mean, yeah, it's I more, guess you guys... I would say it's more like um, social distancing, like a friends group, where it's, we're all in this together, mm -hmm. kind of and seeing what you're going through visually. It is photography, but we're all photographers, that's why. I'm, I'm gonna unmute um, Sophia Sebastian, uh, if she's still there. Sophia uh, is a great photographer um, here in DC, and we actually had one of her uh, images up there. She was gonna ask a question about, uh, to Ruben about uh, riding the subway, but Sophia, you're unmuted. You can, you can ask anything you want or, or make a comment on, on what you've heard tonight. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Hi, Sophia. Hi, how are you? Hello, Golnara. <laughs> um, hi, Ruben. Um, hi. Hi, everyone. Hi. So, I just want to second what, um, what has been just said. Um, it's been like quite amazing to listen to you. I also have like two kids at home, so I can totally relate to what has been said. I just had a meltdown. Uh, one of my daughters uh, five minutes ago um, so <laughs> good timing to bring me on right now because everything <laughs> seems calm um, and uh, I guess like one thing is that I would love to have all these resources that people have been talking about available I am familiar with some of them but not others um, and just a very like uh, technical logistical question for Ruben. Uh, I don't know why, but this is, you know, one of the questions that kind of drive me crazy because the one thing that I would really love to do is to uh, be able to go, to go out a little bit and see what's going on in the city just because I have two children, I can't do it. So I'm mm -hmm. pretty much like 24 seven at home. Uh, I mean, we come out maybe like, 40 minutes every day to do some exercise because that's so important to keep sanity. Um, but otherwise, I mean, I, we just stay in the neighborhood and we, I just can't see what's happening in the city. Mm -hmm. so, um, so, I, so one of the questions I have is that how did you move around? Because that's one of the questions that I have for myself. If I could do this, how would I move around? You know, subway seems like I don't know, it's maybe a little bit too risky. Um, New York City is a big city, so how does it work for you, Robin? Um, well, I mean, it's, it's like I was saying before, every day is a new day, right? Like, so what I say today, tomorrow I might feel differently, but you know, uh, I will admit that the subway is where I feel the most squeamish 
about yeah. going, but that was true before COVID-19. So, <laughs> you know, it, it, the New York subway <laughs> is um, not for the squeamish anyway. Uh, you know, I mean, it's just like anywhere else. Subway. You don't want to touch anything with your skin uh, and you want to stay far away from other people. I mean, it, strangely, right now, there's so few people on the street that, uh, or, or in the subway that, you know, I see, I watch as the subway train is entering the station. If I see that the car that would be closest to me has too many people in it, I take my chances on the next one. And usually I don't have any trouble keeping uh, pretty far from people. And like I said, I don't touch anything with, with my hands uh, or skin at all. Um, I mean, honestly, like it's, uh, it feels risky out there, but I mean, there's other things you can do. You don't have to go get on a train. I think, you know, someone else just mentioned in the chat about, about cycling, if you're into that, okay. um, you yeah. know, and, and honestly, like I'm spoiled in New York city cause I don't really have to get on the subway. Like I, I, uh, there was on, uh, I think it was two Saturdays ago when I walked 10 miles, I, uh, I walked, uh, I walked across the East river over a bridge into Manhattan and then walked up, uh, you know, all the way to Times Square and beyond. And, you know, it's, um, I, it's a very walkable city I live in. DC is also very walkable, although, you know, not quite the same as New York in terms of being mm -hmm. and being flat. But, um, but also there's no reason, you know, at least with my approach, there's no reason you couldn't make important photographs right in your uh, immediate neighborhood or at home. You know, mm -hmm. because my approach uh, really came out of this thing, and I know you and I have talked about this, but this is for the benefit of others, that, you know, my approach came out of this deep, almost biological desire to erase any separation between my art-making life and the rest of my life. I wanted it to all be one thing. And that, that happened to me as a kid, that, that I got that idea in my head and could never let go of it. So to me, like wherever I am, there, there might be a photograph there. And, and so I'm always looking. And, you know, maybe that time when you think what you're doing is taking care of your kid or, or cleaning the bathroom or something. You know, if you're, if you're keeping your eye peeled for visually interesting stuff, it, it could happen, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, and I'm I'm starting to do that. Uh, okay. and it's quite it's quite amazing, like how before, like I have never noticed things in my house that now I'm like, oh my god, this is so beautiful. The light. Yeah, that's happening <laughs> to me too. That's totally happening to me too. And yeah. also, you know, we we especially like you know photographers who've been in it for a long time. In some way, we are comfortable in you know we got comfortable and doing things, you know, every day, you know, going same places, shooting the similar things, similar style. And this is actually perfect time to get out of your comfort zone mm -hmm. and, 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 and do something else. Just, yeah. it's, yeah. And, and you, you might be surprised, you know, you, that your eyes can see so many different things. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Um, of my friends and I, um, all family documentary photographers who live all over the US, I think one's in Barbados, we're doing this call and response. So what happens is one of us takes a picture as the call and it can be whatever, it, it can be more fine art. Um, it's all pretty much based on COVID-19 social distancing sort of thing, but a lot of us are in our homes. And then I email it to um, Erica, who's my partner, and she responds to it. So we're writing letters back and forth through our pictures. And it's really cool to see um, what we're producing and how we're kind of co conversing with each other. But then it's also really cool to see how everyone else in my group, because we're all paired up, is talking with each other. And um, that's helped me see things completely differently because sometimes I'm trying to respond with an image that I might not normally shoot like. So that's another aspect for people to think about or an avenue to go down. Um, and it's communicating too, and at the same time, just the pictures. Can I see a dog, Angela? Oh, okay. So um, this is Cindy Lauper, the one that my kids dyed pink the other day. 
Oh, um, he still got some pink on him. <laughs> and, um, Elvis Presley is, hold on, let me get Elvis Presley. No, I don't know if he wants me to hold him right now. And then this is Elvis Presley. Aww. We had a Lionel Richie, but he passed away, so. Yeah. <laughs> and now we have three ducks. Yes, so. <laughs> so we're almost out of time. Um, I'm going to just uh, pass it to uh, whoever wants to, to give us any, um, any closing, closing remarks. Any, any, anything you want to leave with the folks out there before we, before we cut it off? It's okay if you don't have anything. <laughs> Oh, Gunnar, I love your cat. Oh, my God. <laughs> I'm just seeing it now. So I, I want, I, I, I'm, um, I, I was just, you know, I've been very impressed with this group from when we had our little practice session till tonight. I mean, I think what um, was echoed by some of the comments tonight is, is, is it's so important just to have this connection, to still feel like you can create in these circumstances. But also, I think there was some, some points that were made that you don't have to create. You don't, shouldn't feel pressure that, you know, you shouldn't feel guilty if you're not picking up your camera and going out there and making a picture a day or, or wandering the streets or, or, or whatever. You know, there's a lot going on right now. First thing to do is to take care of yourself, I think. I mean, that, that's, and, and some of us take care of ourselves by being creative, by diving into these projects. Um, I want to thank everyone who joined us uh, online tonight. Uh, really appreciate you coming. It was our first show. We, you know, uh, it, it worked. We, I think we we were able to to go live. So so that's a, that's a win. A special thanks to Shelly Hahn who was helping behind the scenes tonight, and also to Susie Bauer who was managing the live stream on Facebook. And really thanks again to our truly amazing panelists for sharing your stories and your experiences. Yeah, especially uh, speaking from the heart, everybody. It really is very powerful and important. Absolutely. I will be posting a video of tonight's talk on our website and our YouTube page. And there should also be recording available on um, Focus on the Stories uh, Facebook page. Um, you know, these are, these are tough times. Um, and we're all just trying to, to cope the best that we can. Um, the and i'm sorry i <laughs> um we thought this would come at the end um so i i just want to say wherever you are tonight take care of yourself um and your loved ones um and please join us next week for a special discussion about searching for hope in a time of despair um we're gonna have uh david allen harvey and maggie steber joining us uh they'll be joining Miami Herald photojournalist Carl Hughes to talk about a new project that he's spearheading that's just going to curate images that remind us of what hope looks like. Uh, the project is called Imagine Visions of Hope and Focus on the Story is proud to be a partner. Uh, you can find that project online at imaginevisionsofhope.org and um, you can find a description of that on our website on our schedule and uh, there's a registration link there to sign up for next week's talk. Um, we'll also go through the questions to see some that maybe weren't answered that, that we can answer. And also through the chat log, I will compile all the links that were shared tonight and, uh, and some of the resources, and I will make them available on our uh, Facebook page or our blog. So, so keep an eye on, on our, um, our Facebook page. I'll, I'll post uh, a wrap up with with some of those important links that were shared. Um, I really did um, didn't follow the chat too much, but I did see there was a lot of traffic there, and it seemed like there was some really great engagement. And people that were watching tonight shared some some information that everyone should should take a look at. So again, thank you very much, and thank I hope to see you next week. Thank thanks to all of you. Thank, thank you to everybody. Gonna, thank you. See you soon. Thanks, thanks everybody. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Bye, you guys. Ha, 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 ha.